In this three steps to sketch, we're going to go through a basic example of graphing a shifted secant equation. So we'll look at y equals secant of x minus pi over two. So we can see that we have a shift. It's going to be a horizontal or phase shift because we have x minus pi over two. So that's our evidence of our shift. And that's how we know we should use our shifted secant method. This is not a very complex shift, and it would be very easy to simply take the graph of y equals secant x and then shift it. It'll be a shift right, pi over two units. So if you know the graph of secant, I think that would be the easiest way to accomplish this. However, we're going to go through the method where we rely on our knowledge of graphing cosine, and then we'll get our secant graph. We're using this three steps to sketch method. Really the point of this example is to get more comfortable with the method and the analysis that goes with it so we can apply it to very complex shifted secant graphs. So let's go ahead with our method. Here's our template, a quick overview. Step one, we'll find our companion equation and all the essential information for that. The companion equation to a secant graph is going to be a cosine graph because they're reciprocals. So we'll analyze, we'll record everything here. Um, We'll also find the asymptotes that we should expect for our final secant graph. Um, and then we'll move into step two, where we plot our companion cosine pattern and take care of the shift. Um, we'll do this lightly or in a different color because that's not our final graph. That's what happens in step three, where we create our reciprocal graph with just a quick changeover of some key points. We'll sketch in our secant graph and then repeat. All right, so let's get started with our equation, y equals secant x minus pi over two. Remember the general form for a shifted secant graph is y equals a secant of bx minus c plus d. So we can go ahead and note we don't have a d term. We don't have a vertical shift. If you want to go ahead and even mark that in your template, you can. Um, we see nothing is past the parentheses. And I also like to check here bx minus c is our general form. We have x minus pi over 2. So that just makes our sign for our C term a little more obvious. Our C is positive pi over two. All right, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's jump into step one. Find our companion equation. That's going to be our reciprocal or cosine equation. So simply replace secant with cosine. And then we're going to jump into the analysis. All right, so we're graphing y equals cosine of x minus pi over two. And the first thing for our base graph is identifying a which is that leading coefficient. So it's an understood one, and that'll help us set our points in our companion pattern in step two. So we'll come back to A. B is the coefficient of X. That's another understood one. So we know we have one cycle of our graph that happens between zero and two pi. That's one thing B tells us. It also helps us calculate the period, and we do that using the formula two pi over B. That's easy enough here. It just simplifies to two pi. That's the length of one horizontal cycle. Now we can choose our scale labels. Remember, you can choose any type of label for your scales, but it helps to be very intentional with your horizontal axis in particular. So take your period and divide by four, and that will ensure that your companion pattern in step two, this is before you shift, will always align nicely with the horizontal tick marks. Okay, so we're very intentional in this three steps to sketch method. So two pi divided by four simplifies to pi over two, that's how we'll count our tick marks on the horizontal axis. And for our vertical axis, one usually works well. Double check that value of A, seems like it'll work great. So let's take a minute now to label our axes. Starting with the horizontal axis, count by one pi over two. So one pi over two, two pi over two reduces to pi, three pi over two, four pi over two, of course is two pi, five pi over two. All right. We'll go in the other direction. Of course, it's all the same values as the other side, just with the negative. Easy enough. And then we'll label our vertical axis, and this time we're just counting by one. So it's just nice to get everything cleanly set up here so the next steps are very easy. All right, finally back to our analysis, let's go into our shifts. We noted at the beginning that there is no term D, so we don't have any vertical shifting going on here. Um, we do have a horizontal or what's known as a phase shift, and we calculate that C divided by B. And we already talked a little bit about looking at that BX minus C format. So our C term is this right here. It's just pi over two. Okay, so we have pi over two. We said B is one. So 
our phase shift is positive pi over 2, or that's shifting right. Okay, and notice that that will be one horizontal grid unit according to the scale that we chose. All right, the last thing I like to do in step one is find the asymptotes equation. There's a really easy way to do this. It'll just take a little bit of scratch work. All you need to do is take the inputs of your secant function. So that's x minus pi over 2 in this case. So we'll write that out, x minus pi over 2. And you need to set them equal to the asymptotes for y equals secant x. That's our parent function. And so those asymptotes happen at pi over 2 plus pi k, where k is an integer. Basically, we are applying the horizontal transformations to the parent asymptotes so that the vertical asymptotes have all of the shifting, um, compression, stretch, whatever's going on, we're applying those transformations. If you want more details about this, check the playlist link um, for secant graphing that I'll post in the video description. I have a couple of videos that go into a lot more detail on just finding this asymptotes equation for secant graphs. But for now, I think that's enough to work with. We have our setup and we just need to solve for x. So all we need to do is add pi over 2 to both sides. Notice that pi over 2 is only a like term with the other pi over 2 on the right side. Pi k is its own type of term, so we don't combine those. So writing that now in our blank, we have x equals, of course, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, or pi, plus pi k. And I like to go ahead and just mentally make a few quick substitutions and simplifications here to see what asymptotes I should expect in my final graph. So let k equal 0, we should have an asymptote at pi. When k is 1, we should have another at 2 pi. If k is negative 1, there should be one at 0. So practice a little bit with that. The more you practice and play around with it, the more comfortable you should get with this asymptotes equation. I think it's a really helpful way to double check that final graph. All right, now we've got all of the analysis and organization done. We're ready for step two. We're going to plot our companion pattern and then take care of the shift. So remember that our companion pattern for a cosine graph starts with a maximum on the y-axis. At the first horizontal tick mark to the right, there's an x-intercept or a zero. Then we'll go to the minimum at the second horizontal tick mark. Then another x-intercept at the third horizontal tick mark. Okay, so that's going to create our pattern. Let's go ahead and lightly, or I'm going to use light blue um, because this is not our final graph. It's just going to be the first basic companion pattern. To get the y-coordinate or the y-intercept to start your maximum here, just look at your value for a. So we can start our companion pattern with a point at 0, 1. That's our maximum. We put an x-intercept at the first horizontal tick mark, so at pi over 2. We have a minimum at the second horizontal tick mark. To get the y-coordinate, just take the opposite value of a, so negative 1. And then we have another x-intercept at 3 pi over 2. So hopefully you can kind of see that cosine companion curve forming. And now we're ready to take care of the shift. It's easy enough. We just have that horizontal or phase shift. We're moving right one horizontal grid unit, or we're moving right pi over 2. If you did have a vertical shift, it's very easy to tack that in to this step. If it's, say, up 2 or down 3, whatever it is, you can do both at the same time. So I'll mark this next, this intermediate graph, with x's. So take each of your points and just shift them right pi over 2. All right, and so again, you can see this cosine curve forming here. That's all there is in step two. Now we're ready for step three, where we make the transition into the reciprocal graph. So sometimes I like to go ahead and put my vertical asymptotes on there from the original zeros. So you can see those pretty clearly. They're still on the x axis here. There's the one at pi, and there's the one at two pi. And we should feel really good about that because those, we actually said, were asymptotes we were predicting from our asymptotes equation. We said when k was 0, we would get the one at pi. And when k was 1, we got the one at 2 pi. So we should feel pretty confident already. Okay, let's change that maximum, or those maximums. We kind of see the second one from our new cycle that would form at 5 pi over 2. But those maximums from our cosine companion graph turn into local minimums for our secant graph. Okay, so you can see the curve here. Okay, we can kind of sketch in. 
it's a partial secant curve, but that still works. Okay, and then the minimum from our cosine companion, put a point there, and that's going to be a local or relative maximum. And you sketch in this full secant curve there. So here is one cycle of y equals secant x minus pi over 2. Now all you have to do is repeat. So of course if you wanted to move toward the right you could extend that secant curve um, and you could go even further to the right if you wanted. Now let's work to the left since that's as much space as we have. Okay so we can sketch in the rest of the, the other half I guess of that secant curve that has the local minimum there. Okay and we're working backward. We have a vertical asymptote. It's here on the y-axis. We already had talked about that's so when k is negative 1. Okay, we should have another local or relative maximum. Sketch that curve in. So you can really see we're just repeating this pattern over and over again. Vertical asymptote here at x equals negative pi. You may be predicting that's when k is negative 2. Plug it in, test it out. Another point for a curve because that's another local minimum. Another vertical asymptote, this time at negative 2 pi. Test it, that's when k is negative 3. A little messy there, sorry. And then another point, another local maximum. So you can see here we have almost three full cycles, yeah, three full cycles of our graph y equals secant x minus pi over 2. We already talked about the asymptotes equation as a double check. I think you also could look back to your term b because we said that shows you should have one cycle that happens between 0 and 2 pi. And so you can see here, 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 and we'll include that too. That's one full cycle of a secant graph. It's most of the original cycle and then part of the other that we created when we started working backward. Um, but we do see that that would be one complete cycle. All right, so that hopefully helps you understand this three steps to sketch method. Um, for graphing shifted secant graphs a little bit better. You see how much it relies on your previous knowledge of graphing cosine, so I think that's really nice. And it also helps you dig into a lot of the features um, and get comfortable with analysis of secant graphs. So be sure to check out more worked examples. I'll post links in the video description, and I'll post links to graphing any of the other trig functions as well, so feel free to check all that out. Thanks for watching.